Hi everybody! This is Miss Karen from the Old Worthington Library welcoming you to our online story times. Today we are doing stories about one of my favorite subjects, food. Do you have a favorite food? Ooh, those all sound good. I really like strawberries. I think they are yummy. So today we're going to be celebrating all kinds of food and we're going to go ahead and get started with our opening song. Just a quick reminder for these signs. Um, this is more for the more we get together. Okay, and together we're going to put our hands together like this and just circle everybody in together. And this is happy. So the more we get together, the happier we'll be. Now, if you're up for a challenge, when we say for your friends, if you put your fingers like this and give each other a kiss and hug, that's friends. Okay? But you gotta move kind of fast. All right, here we go. The more we get together, 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 the more we get together, the happier we'll be. For your friends are my friends, and my friends are your friends. The more we get together, the happier we'll be. And I am so happy to be able to share these stories with you today. Let's get started. So the first story I would like to share with you today is called Grandma's Tiny House. It is by Janae Brownwood, illustrated by Priscilla Burris, and published by Charles Bridge. Tiny in size, at the edge of Brown Street, sits Grandma's old house, where we all go to meet. Grandma's house stays small as the family grows. Will everyone fit inside this time? Who knows? Look at all those family members. One grandma waits in her big easy chair, while two turkeys send scrumptious smells through the air. Three neighbors knock on the brown wooden door with four pots of hot greens and ham hocks galore. But that smells really good now. Five family friends strut straight up the stairs with six dozen biscuits and jam made of pears. Seven cool uncles stroll up in a line with eight jugs of lemonade, ice cold and fine. Nine chatting aunties all head for the den and set down the cheesecakes that add up to ten. Eleven nephews join, slapping high fives and fumbling twelve Sweet potato pies. You see the one that's fumbling? It means he's kind of having a hard time holding on. Yeah, he's getting kisses from the dog and it's sort of making him fumble those sweet potato pies. Thirteen thrilled nieces burst in on the scene with fourteen fresh honeydew, juicy and green. Honeydew are melons. And who is that running? Last but not least, 15 hungry grandkids stampede to the feast. That's when the walls bulge. There is no more space. How will we all eat in this too tiny place? I know. Looks like she has an idea. What do you think she's going to suggest? How can they all eat together? We've stuffed this old house, but the yard's long and wide. Why don't we move our big dinner outside? 
So out skipped the neighbors, nephews, and nieces, while uncles and aunts lugged dinnerware pieces. Friends grab the tables, grandkids grab the chairs. The rest bring the food down grandma's back stairs. Perfect in size at the edge of Brown Street sits grandma's backyard where we all go to eat. That was a really good idea to move it outside. They turned it into a picnic, didn't they? Picnics are really fun. Do you like to take your food outside and eat when the weather's nice? Yeah, I do too. Sit in the nice sunshine and the breeze. I know some other creatures who like picnics too. And it's not always fun when they come to my picnics. Let's pull this over here so we can show you. We have five hungry ants. One, two, three, four, five. So this poem we're going to march along with, all right? We march, you pick up your knees high and you put your foot down, all right? Five hungry ants marching in a line came upon a picnic where they could dine. They marched into the salad they marched into the cake. They marched into the pepper. Uh-oh, that was a mistake. You know what happens if you smell pepper? Sometimes it makes you sneeze. <laughs> Five, take away one. How many do we have left? Four. Four hungry ants marching in a line came upon a picnic where they could dine. They marched into the salad. They marched into the cake. They marched into the pepper. Uh-oh. That was a mistake. <laughs> Take away one is one, two, three. Ready? March. Three hungry ants marching in a line came upon a picnic where they could dine. They marched into the salad. They marched into the cake. They marched into the pepper. Uh-oh. That was a mistake. You ready? Take away one leaves one, two. Ready? Let's march. Two hungry ants marching in a line came upon a picnic where they could dine. They marched into the salad. They marched into the cake. They marched into the pepper. Uh-oh. That was a mistake. <laughs> Two ants take away one ant, leaves one ant. Here we go. You ready to march? One hungry ant marching in a line came upon a picnic where he could dine. He marched into the salad. He marched into the cake. He marched into the pepper. Uh-oh, that was a mistake. Ready? One ant. Take away one ant, please. Zero! 
Oh, good job. Now, another one of my favorite foods is pizza. I love pizza. And today I have a story for you about ordering pizza. And it is called Hi Pizza Man. It is by Virginia Walter and Ponder Gumbel and is published by Purple House Press. Okay. There is a part in here for you. So it's gonna go like this. When the pizza man knocks on your door and you wanna say hello, how do you say hello? Hi, pizza man. We're going to say hi to the pizza deliverers. Okay, here we go. Vivian was playing with her toys on the floor. Mama, I'm hungry, she said. Oh, I know, Vivian. It's so hard to wait for the pizza man to come. When he gets here, what will you say? Hi, pizza man. But what if it's not a pizza man. What if it is a ding dong pizza lady? Then what would you say? Hi, pizza lady. What if it's not a pizza lady? What if it is a ding dong pizza cat? Then what would you say? How do you say hello to a cat? Meow, meow, pizza cat. What if it's not a pizza cat? What if it is a ding dong pizza dog? Then what would you say? Ruff, 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 pizza dog. What if it's not a pizza dog? What if it is a ding dong pizza duck? Then what would you say? Quack, quack, pizza duck. What if it's not a pizza duck? What if it is a ding dong? Pizza cow. Then what would you say? Moo, moo, pizza cow. What if it's not a pizza cow? What if it is a ding dong? Pizza snake. Then what would you say? S pizza snake. What if it's not a pizza snake? What if it is a ding dong pizza dinosaur? Then what would you say? Roar, pizza dinosaur. What if it's not a pizza dinosaur? What if it is a ding dong? Pizza man. Then what would you say? Hi, pizza man. Boy, are we glad to see you. Now, I'm going to bring the flannel board back because we are going to do a nursery rhyme. And you've probably heard this one, but grown-ups, one of the great things about reading books and doing nursery rhymes is that it uses sometimes language that we don't normally use in everyday speech. So we can learn lots of new vocabulary this way. And we today are going to do Little Miss Muppet. And we are going to have her sitting on a tuffet. Now, a tuffet can be another name for a small poofy stool like that, a low seat. But a long time ago, it actually meant a tuft of grass, a little mound of grass. So that's one thing I learned in, in doing some research. And she is eating curds and whey. Do you know what curds and whey are? It's basically like cottage cheese. The curds are the solid part and the whey is the liquid. So 
let's try this, okay? I'm gonna say it once so that you can refresh your memory and then we're gonna do it together, but we're gonna act it out the second time as well, okay? So here we go. Little Miss Muffet sat on a tuffet eating her curds and whey. Along came a spider and sat down beside her and frightened Miss Muffet away. Eek! Right? Now, this time, let's do it acting it out. Are you ready? Here we go. Little Miss Muffet sat on her tuffet, eating her curds and whey. Along came a spider and sat down beside her and frightened Miss Muffet away. Good job. Thanks for your help. Now, sometimes it takes a while to start to like a new food. We don't always like food the first time we try it, do we? So today I'm going to share with you a story called Nope, Never, Not For Me by Samantha Cotterell, and it comes to us from Dial Books for Young Readers. Can you see what, he, what the child is doing? Yeah, they're playing with their dinosaurs even pretending to be a dinosaur. But this dinosaur is saying, nope, never, not for me. Now, can you tell what's on his plate? Yeah, there it is. Looks like it's broccoli. And mom says, just have a look and see what you think. Looks bumpy, too lumpy. Very jumpy. Rawr. Nope, never. Not for me. Have a touch instead. How does it feel? It feels pokey and scratchy. And too ouchy. Nope, never. Not for me. Oh, well then, not every dinosaur likes trees. I'm extinct. I can't hear you anymore. Wait, did you say trees? She wants to try it first. I think she likes it. Perhaps you can try it too? Start with a sniff. Then follow with a touch, touching it to her lips. And now for one teeny little bite, teeny tiny. <clears throat> what do you think? Did they like it or not? Yeah. <clears throat> I don't like it. Not the dino I thought I was. Of course you are. You are a brave triceratops that tried something new. I'm so proud of you. I did it. I did it! Maybe I can try more? I'm a triceratops. Nope, maybe. Yep, this one's for me. I'm a spinachy, a Swiss, a apple, a sparaga triceratops. So see what they did? They put a big dinosaur up there. And there's broccoli, you remember? They didn't like broccoli. But there's the asparagus, it has a happy face. Maybe that's something you'd like to try at home, too. You can keep track of which new foods you've liked and which you haven't. Oh, 
and apparently my brother is a T-Rex. Now we're going to sing a song about food, in particular about apples and bananas. And I'm going to teach you the sign for apple and banana. So the sign for apple is like this, okay? So it almost looks like you got a little dinosaur there. See his head? And you're just gonna twist it right here by your cheek, okay? So that's apple. And this, see if you can guess, is banana, okay? So this song is called, I Like to Eat Apples and Bananas. But we're gonna sing it in kind of a silly way, okay? We're gonna sing it lots of times through. The first time we're just gonna say apples and bananas, but I'm gonna put some letters up here and see if you can tell me their names, okay? So here's, right, that's an A. All right, let's see if you can tell this one. E, I, O, mm -hmm. and U. So when we sing this song, first time we'll say apples and bananas, but then we're going to replace all the ah and banana sounds with the names of these letters. So it'll be Apples and bananas, and then eeples and baninis, apples and bananas, opals and bononos, and ooples and banunus. All right, here we go. This is also the sign for eat if you want to do it with me. I like to eat, eat, eat. Apples and bananas. I like to eat, eat, eat. Apples and bananas. I like to eat, eat, eat. Apples and bananas. I like to eat, eat, eat. Apples and bananas. You ready for E? I like to eat, eat, eat. Apples and bananas. I like to eat, eat, eat. Apples and bananas. Here we go with I. I like to eat, eat, eat. Apples and bananas. I like to eat, eat, eat. Apples and bananas. Oh, I like to oat, oat, oat. Apples and bananas. I like to oat, oat, oat. Apples and bananas. You, ooh, I like to oot, oot, oot. Ooples and bananas. I like to oot, oot, oot. Ooples and bananas. All right, let's sing it the regular way again. Ready? I like to eat, eat, eat. Apples and bananas. I like to eat, eat, eat apples and bananas. Good job. Thank you so much for helping me with that song. Now, let's get ready to do our closing rhyme. Are you ready? We are going to stretch way up high and tickle the clouds. Now, tickle your toes. Turn around and tickle your nose. Reach down low. Reach up high. Story time's over. Wave goodbye. Goodbye. 
Bye-bye. Thanks for playing today. We'll be taking a little bit of a break until January. So we'll have new story time starting in January. But in the meantime, I hope you have some favorites you can go back to. Everybody take care. And we look forward to seeing you in person someday soon. Right? Bye-bye, everybody.